Oh. Okay. Let's try it. Um, I will call to order the April 20th, 2021 meeting of the City of Detroit City Council at 6.34 p.m. Uh, roll call. Councilor Engel, let's start with you. Councilor Shelley Engel, Building Commissioner. Councilor Smith's here. Uh, Greg Shepard, Street Commissioner. Councilor Cage, uh, Parks Commissioner. Michelle Tesdale, Tourism Commissioner. Councilor Luke, uh, Water Commissioner. And Mayor Tret, uh, Emergency Preparedness. So, uh, you'll notice a new uh, agenda layout tonight. We'll be playing with that, uh, trying to make it a little bit more streamlined in the future. Under special orders of business, I ask- Actually, actually Mr. Mayor, first, um, because we don't have a, a rule, rules of procedure for setting the agenda, the first thing that the council needs to vote on is approval of the agenda, okay. which is number three. So it'd be appropriate for a motion in a second to approve the agenda as presented. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? I make the motion, we approve the agenda as amended. Councilor Page moves. Second. I'll, I'll second that. Second, Councilor Smith. Okay, all of the papers say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And the abstentions, motion passes unanimously. At this time, under special orders of business, I ask for unanimous consent to move to the order of business on the agenda of the mayor's report without objection. Hearing none, at this time, pursuant to chapter three, section 10. Actually, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, please. I believe we need to let uh, uh, Commissioners Cameron and uh, Bethel uh, make their presentation. Okay, thank you. This is new to me. Uh, we have Commissioners, uh, County Commissioners Cameron and Bethel here, and they'd like to make a presentation to the uh, Council at this time. And you're probably going to have to use Commissioners. Uh, Eric, can we use your microphone again? That, we don't think that works. We have to stand over his shoulder. And yeah, speak into his. We're going to get cozy over here, Commissioner. You can raise it and I'll just stand okay. in your tent. You can speak into the gizmo. Okay. I'm going to try to get on the, on the Zoom as well. Can you hear me okay if I just hold this? It might be weird yeah. if I just do it as an ear. Okay, well, I'm here in the county commissioner, the county council, and I appreciate the being moved up to the top of the agenda. We in all intents and purposes, we would just come under public comment, but this is great as well. And I'm joined, I'm joined by, by Commissioner Kevin Cameron. And, and we, we just, just wanted to give um, a couple of updates. Um, one, I came a few weeks ago and just shared how the county has been working diligently um, to support the city of the Canyon who were affected by the wildfire. I think most of you would know that because we talked to each of you repeatedly um, over the course of the last eight or nine months. and. I had also told you that we have been working on securing a lot of money in different capacities. And so I had our team create a draft report, and I just wanted to give you an update on what that would look like. Um, and this is a combination of state and federal dollars, and I'm just going to go through it in high level, and then our staff will email it to each of you so you can look at it um, directly. Um, so right now, um, in Marion County, most of you know that in February, the commissioner allocated $500,000 in lottery dollars to um, support the communities of the Canyon who were affected by the wildfire. We additionally um, authorized a $50,000 expenditure for the city of Gates, which we delivered them a check. And that came from general fund. But the $500,000 is still there in the event that the commissioners 
um, learn of a circumstance that arises that has an immediate need for dollars that we can act on. Um, and then we've also administered $100,000 from general fund for the Midland Valley Council of Governments um, for administrative support. Um, we've heard that there are different um, needs of the cities. And so we're going out constantly looking for resources to fill those needs because we understand that the communities that were impacted um, are struggling financially. So that's just specific dollars from the county's budget. In addition to that, um, we've currently asked for a total of $95 million, um, just over that actually, $95,927,973 um, from state and federal partners. From the state level, um, 88,417,839, um, of which currently 1,509,781 has been approved. That money is coming to us. Um, this week, the governor will hopefully be signing the rebalance bill that will bring us the $1,509,000. And that's dollars that are going to support a variety of components. The first one is funding for the cities of Detroit and Gates for $370,000 that's going to help for operating costs, which um, I believe you know. An additional $426,000 is coming to the county to support additional sheriff's overtime in county park reconstruction. Um, we all know that we need additional security at the canyon. Um, we've asked for $350,000 for the Idana Detroit Rural Fire Protection District to help with their operation costs. Um, and also uh, $362,000 through a grant application for a temporary radio tower reimbursement. Um, because we know that the towers up the canyon were affected by the fire. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel like I just went ran and ran a marathon. Um, we also have received um, approval from Business Oregon for $300,000 that will support one-year funding, um, which is a grant that comes to Marion County for two part-time city managers, one for Gates and one for Detroit. Marianne Hill has started with Gates. She's been there now probably six weeks. And I'm really thrilled to report that we've been able to secure somebody for Detroit. Um, that part-time individual began yesterday, they're an employee, a temporary employee of Marion County that um, we would like to share with Detroit to participate in all the staff needs and supports that are coming forward. And then we also have funding through a contract with Marion County, excuse me, Midland Valley Council of Governments for planning services. So McClay and other support and that you're receiving. And then on that same category, um, we received um, approval for $409,000 for our San Diego Canyon Wildfire Recovery Program Coordinator. Um, Scott Minter, who we have met, and if not, you will be meeting, because he started a few weeks ago and is getting things started. Um, there's a lot more on here to make up that $95 million, and as I said, I'll send it to you so you can look at it. It's important to know that this money, with the exception of the $300,000, um, will be a direct allocation to the cities, is coming to the county. And we'll be working with you all to make sure that the services and needs that you have are met and um, that those dollars are spent accordingly at your ask, at your level as a council. So I just want to say thank you so much for reaching out to us, to talking to the commissioners as regularly as you do, to let us know what's happening at the grassroots level so we can show up and advocate for you um, at all levels of government and make sure that we can recover each rate as quickly as possible. Did you want to add anything? Sure. Huh? Sure. Okay, I'm going to put this down. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, thank you for the record. My name is Kevin Cameron. Uh, I'm Marion County Commissioner, but it's probably more important to me for this council. Uh, I'm a resident at 425 Cluster Road uh, West in um, Detroit, Oregon. I want to thank you and all the work that you're doing to try to help the citizens get back, and uh, I'm looking forward to being back in my home. I did get the water turned on, I don't believe it was last Tuesday. Thank you, Kelly and um, Michelle for and, and Bob for making all that happen. Um, the, uh, the, the things that Commissioner Bethel was talking about there are important. I, I just want to make it really clear that 
We do. We have secured about 1.1 million. We know that's coming because the governor signed this cap right to check directly to you at the gate and to the fire board, and some of that will be coming to the county. In addition to that, we've been working um, a lot, and some of you have done this as well, testifying on other bills that will matter to the citizens of the county. Um, Marion County has suspended all our building, uh, our, our building fees for um, for five years for residents, uh, permanent residents, and two years for non-permanent residents as they rebuild. Today I testified on, uh, I believe it's uh, Senate Bill 405A in both versions. It would make that a, um, very clear in the legislature that non-conforming use would be able to be rebuilt over five years instead of the one year that's in the statute today. That bill passed the Senate floor with only one no vote. Uh, and I think that person said they're not voting on any yes because they feel people aren't being represented with it. With the, I know what it was. You're shaking your head. Uh, and it's in the, it's in the, uh, we had a public hearing today. It's in the um, House Wildfire Committee. Um, Chair Clem has been gracious to try to move that forward with all the work session schedules for the second. So I'm sure you'll see that come out, go to the House floor quickly, and hopefully the governor will sign that. So people will have certainty moving forward with uh, what non conforming use um, is. Um, the other the other thing is Danielle has already, uh, Commissioner Bethel, sorry, Commissioner Bethel has already talked to you about, and we'll continue to be there. And uh, I want to thank you for your service and all that you're doing. And we would be um, forgetting somebody if we didn't say, we want to thank uh, uh, Deputy Olson, I want to say Garrett Garrett, um, <laughs> Deputy Olson, and the Marion County Sheriff's Department and our Public Works Department for all the things they're doing. We, we have um, such a, a fantastic outward mindset. Um, we're already tall and we So, Mr. Mayor, I apologize that I should have mentioned, um, because I had mentioned that Marianne Hill is at Gates. Um, Chris Epley is the uh, temporary city manager that the county has secured. Um, he is a very uh, knowledgeable city manager of 20 plus years in that position. And um, so he started with us on Monday, and we're very excited to be able to bring his level of expertise um, with small town government. Um, to the county in support of Detroit um, and other projects. He won't be specifically working with the city of Detroit. He'll be working with the county in other capacities. Um, but his primary focus for the time being um, at your approval will be to work with the city of Detroit. Your microphone is off, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I was trying, trying to cut down on the echo. So now I ask for unanimous consent to move to the order of business on the agenda, mayor's report without objection. At this time, pursuant to chapter three, section 10 of the city charter for the city of Detroit, I announce that I'm appointing Chris Ebley to the office of interim city manager. Chapter three, section 10 of the city charter for the city of Detroit, Requires consent of the council. If there is, is there a motion to uh, consent to the appointment of Chris Epley to the office of the interim city manager? Mayor Tread. Councilor Angle. I move the Detroit City Council consent to the appointment of Chris Epley to the office of interim city manager. I'll second that. Have a second, Councilor Page. The question is on the consent to the appointment of Chris Epley to the office of interim city manager. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? 
abstentions? And it passes unanimously. We'll now return to the agenda special order of business. Mayor Trett. Councilor Engel. Having voted on the prevailing side of the vote to adopt resolution 618 at the last meeting of the City Council of Detroit, I move the Detroit City Council reconsider the vote on the adoption of resolution 618. Councilor, uh, President Engel has moved for reconsideration of the vote of Detroit City Council to adopt resolution 618. Is there a second? Second, Councilor Smith. A motion to reconsider the vote upon which resolution 618 was approved by the Detroit City Council has been moved and seconded in council. President, uh, you can uh, address your motion, please. So I suffer from panic attacks, which is a form of mental illness, which is brought on by conflict with the contentiousness and the confusion of the motion to adopt resolution 618, I found myself in the midst of a panic attack of anxiety. When that happens, I lose my ability to hear, to really see and to comprehend what's going on. This happened to me. And when a day or so later, I had the opportunity to watch the video, I realized that I had not voted in the way that I intended. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing, hearing none, um, the question is to whether to vote upon the re which resolution uh, 618 was approved by the Detroit City Council should be reconsidered. All those in favor, vote by signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, motion passes. Okay, um, having voted to reconsider the vote upon which resolution 618 was approved by the Detroit City Council, the question now comes to the approval of, or rejection of resolution 618. Is there any discussion? Um, I don't have resolution. This is Councillor Tesdell. I don't have that in front of me. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have copies of Resolution 618 for the councilors who are present. Um, let's see, one, two. Here you go. So I'm passing out the copy of the motion of the resolution. This is the resolution that says that the regular city council meetings to be held the first Tuesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. at the City of Kaiser, Oregon City Hall and to allow Zoom meetings until a more suitable location closer to Detroit is available. That's the text of the resolution. So you're, you, the, since the motion to reconsider has been, has been approved, we're now voting on passage of resolution 618. Any discussion? Okay. Sure. Sure. So last week, uh, resolution 618 was brought up and the council voted to, uh, they amended it a couple of times. Uh, and what I've just passed out is the result of the amendments to resolution 618. So this is what you approved last uh, last Tuesday, okay, you've now uh, agreed to bring it back for reconsideration. Uh, and so now you're either voting in favor or, or against the, the resolution 618. If you, if the, if the resolution fails, then the next meeting, the right now, the, the meetings, excuse me, the, the, the rules, as I understand them, require meetings on the first and third uh, Tuesday of every month at 530. So what we'll have to do is bring back another resolution uh, to address the times and meeting places in the future. But um, 
but for now what you're voting on is is this particular resolution whether or not you want to move city council meetings to the first tuesday of the month at 6 30 kaiser city hall and allow zoom people to uh, attend by zoom until a more suitable location closer to detroit oregon is available is that that's, what right that's what you're voting on right now thank you so much my pleasure discussion what's the difference between what we did last week and that other than the 6 30. well no this this is what you did last week you're just you're voting on it again because you just voted to reconsider so what you're so if this resolution passes then this is when you're going to meet you're going to meet the second tuesday of every month at 6 30 um, and allow people to attend by Zoom. If this doesn't pass, then you're going to meet uh, on the first and sec first and third Tuesdays of every month at 5:30 at a location to be determined. Because there's nothing right now. The, the obviously you're supposed to meet in Detroit, but there's no place to meet in Detroit. So, um, so that's that, that's really what your options are at this moment in time. kind of confused so so is this this is to i heard you say the first and third um tuesday In, instead of okay so so are you saying that the motion is to have us all meet in kaiser um no that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying right now is resolution 618 as it currently stands, uh, which was passed last week, says that you will meet the first Tuesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. In, in the city of Kaiser's city hall chambers, council chambers, and we're gonna allow people to attend by Zoom. That's what this resolution says. If it passes, that's what will be allowed. If it doesn't pass, then you can revert back to the way to, to the what I'll call the old rules, which was the first and third Tuesday of every month at 530 at a place to be determined. And whether somebody can attend by Zoom, that's kind of up in the air. My understanding is here we're not saying the third Tuesday because I think our discussion has been, Council, correct me if I'm thinking wrong, but that was going to be a special meeting to be canceled if we didn't need it. So that's why I think that's not here. It would be my understanding. Okay. Does that make this? My understanding is that the rules my, is that you meet on the first and third Tuesday of every, right now, the, the last resolution that you passed said that you meet on the first and third Tuesday of every month at 530. If this resolution fails, okay, you're going to revert back to that, okay? So that, that's, that's really what the question that, that you need to address first is, is are you going to meet as it says here in the resolution or are you gonna meet as you used to on the first and third to, uh, Tuesday of every month at 5.30? Before, I mean, before the fires, we met on the second Tuesday at 6.30. And this was to bring it back to the first Tuesday because the chamber here was, was more available. And then I think after the fires, we decided we were doing this as an emergency. And then the third Tuesday meeting was going to be if we needed it because of everything that was happening. I understand. The resolution that you passed before right. said that you're going to meet on the first and third Tuesday of every month at 530. That's what the resolution says. You can always cancel, obviously, but, but if this doesn't pass, you're going to revert back to the old, the old rules, which was the first and third Tuesday of every month at 530. This is Councillor Tesdale. Um, I would like to ask Councillor Engel um, what she was hoping for so we can understand better. 
Councilor Tesdale? Yes. Councilor Hinkle? I would like the opportunity to address the resolution and perhaps rewrite it in a way that that we can find a majority would like and would want to accept. Not not tonight, because that's not where we are tonight. That would be for another night. So then can we call for a vote? Well, or can we, if we, if we need to readdress this, do we need to table it? No, I would vote on the resolution, either up and down on the resolution, and then we can come back with another resolution at the next meeting, which would be the first Tuesday of May, uh, that, you, that you can then, you, that and I'll work on it with all the city councilors, and we'll come back and have something to vote on at that time. Mayor, Councilor Luke. Uh, and I also wanted to ask uh, Mr. Dan, the, when you were reading. Unmute, the Tim. Unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim. It's not just me. <laughs> that, there you go. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Mr. Dan, at the end of this, also, the resolution also um, does read, if passed, that. Um, to allow the zoo meetings into a more suitable location closer to Detroit. Um, and so, Councilor Pesel, I wanted you to know that part of it. So if we were to pass this resolution, we would have regular council meetings held the first Tuesday of the month at 6.30 at Kaiser City Hall, and to allow zoo meetings also until a more suitable location closer to Detroit where Oregon is available. And then, so if that would pass, then uh, that's, that's what we would have as one meeting instead of two. Um, and then we could talk about uh, a further resolution um, or addition to this for at the next meeting. If, if this passes. If this were to pass. So, so don't be afraid to ask questions, um, Councilor Chesdale. If, you don't understand this because I didn't either and I was afraid to speak up, but I did. <clears throat> Are we back to call for the vote on this? You can call the question. I'm right. calling for the question. Yep, the question is on um, reconsideration of uh, resolution 618 as amended um, so now you, you call for the eyes and the, the A's and the A's. Okay. Okay, so yes is keep it the same, no is come back to it and talk about it again? Correct. Correct. I heard a but. No. Okay. Okay, so understand yes keeps what we have. No says we send this back for more work. All those in favor of pass solution resolution 618 signified by saying aye. All those opposed. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Did you vote aye? What? Yes, to keep it the same. To keep it the same? Yeah. yeah. Keep it the same. As as right here. Here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll try it again. All those in favor of passing resolution number 618, signified by saying the hi and raising your hand, please. Aye. 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 Motion. Uh, all those opposed? All those opposed, signified by saying aye. 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 Okay, the resolution fails. No, resolution makes, fails. I'll pour the fruit. And we'll go back. Thank you. We can hear you, Mayor Trett, but you're muted. I hear me fine. Um, status of Detroit Community Center by Chris Startup, Rich Duncan, Candy Bay. Folks, what's going on?
Well, I'll go first. I was my, you didn't call my name first, but okay. this is Rich Duncan. Um, Rich is on right now. Rich is on right now, and I just wanted to introduce. Oh. So I will just introduce Rich and Chris, and they'll be taking over and giving you guys a little spill on the community center. Thank you. Mr. Duncan. Thank you. Uh, you know, I given everybody kind of a, you know, the heads up on the project up there, you know, we, uh, um, everybody's leaned in. It's been, uh, it's been kind of a, a real warming feeling to see uh, the community and certainly the, the construction community uh, come together. Um, we, we kind of tallied it up today and we have got over a million and a half dollars in in-kind donations uh, for products and goods and services to get that building going. Um, there's a few holes that we have, but you know, I think once we get started, those, those are gonna, you know, we're gonna fill those up uh, pretty easily. So um, we're in Marion County for our per final permit uh, approval. And uh, I believe we have our septic uh, approved and we are um, got our building staked out. Uh, I've got a project manager up on site working now full time on the project. And we're, uh, we're gonna start seeing some dirt move. Um, We've got uh, some signage going up, letting people know that the, the uh, trusted uh, contractors that have leaned in will we'll start posting those. I certainly wanna express going to the uh, SaniumRebuildCoalition.org website. Um, and you can see there's over 60 uh, companies that have leaned in and you can check those companies out. Uh, and also you can see how to, how to help yourself and, and be a resource. Um, so just exciting times. Great. It's great to see the uh, fence around it. That tells me things are happening. Yeah. So, thank you. No, uh, Chris. Not that much. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm here just to represent the foundation's progress. Um, and if there's any questions from any of the counselors, of course, that's what I'd like to answer. Um, I've heard some, there's been some questions that people have called me with. And, and if anybody has any questions they'd like to ask me now, I'd love to hear them. Um, We've, you know, we're in the same spot that we've pretty much been. We're diligently working to build this community center. And, um, and Rich Duncan is absolutely amazing when it comes to that. We've been doing some amazing fundraising. Um, we, our committee for fundraising has been doing absolutely wonders and diligently working um, on finding new avenues to raise funds. So um, we're pretty happy with where we're at with all of that. And, do you guys have any questions for me? Questions for? When are we going to see things actually being done on the gym? <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> We've got uh, Summit Restoration has agreed to come up and start uh, doing the uh, restoration of the interior. Um, so they did some analysis on a lot of the banners and a lot of the signage. Um, we've taken the uh, scoreboards been taken down. Uh, we're looking for somebody now that can uh, refurbish that scoreboard. Um, but our, our intent, we're starting uh, as we speak, we're starting on, uh, you know, kind of painstakingly putting that back, uh, test of time, back the way it was. So um, anybody played sports uh, back in the day in that gym, they're going to walk in and hopefully the gym will be uh, just like they remember it. Great. Thank you. Uh, uh, Rick, uh, Greg Shepard, uh, do you have a completion date? Uh, for that project, I you know our again where everybody's volunteered, everybody's day. very busy. Uh, our goal uh, in you know kind of put our foot on the down on the ground, saying we want to be able to have at least a picnic or some kind of event in the in the gymnasium uh, portion uh, by Labor Day. Um, we probably won't be done with the complete project with landscaping or you know some of the final uh, parts of the building. Um, again, just. You know, we, we were like trying to get storefront materials and storefronts are, you know, they're so far out in uh, lead times. Uh, and then on top, wanting to get it donated, you know, we got a lot of big asks out there. So we're going to have some timing issues to get done, um, you know, with a complete project before Labor Day. But, um, you know, I'm sure we're going to be able to be able to use the gym for at least an event or two at, for Labor Day. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, keep up the good work. You betcha. And finally, um, to
tonight we have uh, in the chamber here that we're using the city of Kaiser, uh, Mayor Clark from the city of Kaiser. I'd like to ask her to come up and thank her so much. Well, good evening, uh, Mayor, uh, City Council members. Thank you so much. Uh, for allowing me to speak this evening. Uh, my name is Kathy Clark. I'm the mayor of the city of Kaiser. And I realized I hadn't had a chance to welcome you here to our beautiful home. And we're glad to be able to extend our hospitality to you um, and use our city hall as you do the incredible work that you're doing to build your city and to chart the course for your future. Um, I know a lot of us, um, have been involved from the beginning, trying to be supportive of you as our neighbors. We recognize that Marion County is strong because we all work together. Um, all 20 cities are unincorporated areas and that's what ma has made Marion County such a special place for all of us. So we're glad to open our doors to you and we're glad to do what uh, you need. Uh, you tell us and we'll work together with you at your direction to make sure that you are able to do the things you need to do to make your city grow, thrive, and be strong into the future. So thank you so much. Thank you. And again, I'd like everybody to know uh, the night, September 8th, the, well, the morning of September 9th, when everybody was being evacuated, 1.30 in the morning, the first call I got on my cell phone uh, was Mayor Clark saying, people can go to Kaiser Rapids Park, it's open. And uh, if people need a place to put their trailers, that's it. That was basically an hour and a half after everything started. Um, Mayor Clark was on the phone to offer uh, the city of Kaiser support. I think it was like 4.30 in the morning, she called me and said, they woke up the, the owner of the volcanoes and the parking lot that the volcano stadium was now open. Uh, and all that, again, that happened the first night while uh, we were still trying to figure out what was going on. So thank you so much, Mayor Clark, for everything. I appreciate it uh, personally and as a city. So thank you. You're very welcome. We're in this for the long haul, just like you are. Yeah, thank you. Moving along, a budget committee update. Uh, the city is in receipt of a second application to serve on the budget committee. Please appoint Ms. Ms. Donna, I'm gonna say her name wrong, Demi to the budget committee. The first budget committee meeting is scheduled for Friday, May 14th at 5.30 p.m. Council, I hope that's on your calendar. A location or format to hold the meeting has not been established and should be discussed at the April 20th meeting. Um, at this moment, 11 people should be in attendance. Uh, councilors, seven councilors, two city committee members, uh, citizen committee members, and uh, the budget officers. So, um, uh, Mayor Tripp, I uh, believe that our staff person, Kelly Dolbrick, has received another application, but in her amazing amount of things that she's trying to do, missed it. But I believe she's sharing it on her screen at this time. Can you scroll it down? And we have received a letter of request to join the committee from John Engel. Um, so Kelly, these are both eligible. Oh, they are. Okay, thank you. So do I have a motion to appoint Ms. Donna Dami and John Engel to the budget committee? I'll make a motion to appoint Ron. I have a motion, Councilor Page. I'll second, second that. Second, Councilor Shepard. Uh, also, uh, we do try to get uh, seven citizens, if possible, if we can. Uh, that's that's still ongoing, isn't it? Is there a deadline to get on that budget committee? Or? Probably uh, yeah. the next council meeting. Uh, maybe, maybe. Okay. or even up to the night, maybe. We'll check that out. Okay. So, thank you. As I remember in the past, it was we always tried to get seven, but we sometimes had a problem. But yeah. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor, Councilor Engel. 
uh, to make to make the point when I read this document, you you're to return this letter as confirmed by April 13th. Okay, thank you. All those in favor to say aye. Aye. All the same sign. Abstentions. Motion passes unanimously. Public comment. Uh, this is the time set aside for comments from the public on matters not on the agenda. Commentators uh, are limited to three minutes. Uh, time may not be yielded. Questions from the council or staff to uh, commentators uh, shall not be counted against the allotted three minutes. Anybody have anything? Yes. Up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to Mr. Rose first. And hey. Then... Oh, go ahead. Mr. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to ask, is there a, I've looked through the website. Um, is there any qualifications for a fire pit in the city of Detroit? Um, Cause as um, a lot of you know, um, fourth street is basically now in the rebuilding phase. We had FEMA up there last week that basically took everything from uh, both of the two lots that were still left and uh, they took away our um, fire pit. So I'm wondering, is there a code requirement for the fire pit or? We don't, we don't, we haven't seen one. We, we're assuming you can go back to what you had. Mr. Mayor, uh, how about if I get Mr. Rose's uh, contact information and we will get in touch with him and let him know uh, in Mr. the next 24 hours. Are you good with that? If we, could you, yeah, uh, uh, could do you, you in, the chat, in the chat, put your contact information and we'll get back to you. Uh, there's well, no chat. Yeah, there's no chat tonight, Mr. Okay, Mayor. Okay, we'll, I, I will get it from Kelly. I, okay. I have his I have his email address. Yeah. Okay. He, great. Todd Todd has all my information. I've been okay. communicating with him. We'll get back, Mr. Rose. I'll get back to you. Okay. Okay. That's it. And we have Commissioner Bethel back. We need to get you the wireless one. Wouldn't that be long? <laughs> okay, so I apologize. Um, one of the reports that we wanted to provide earlier, um, I thought Commissioner Cameron was going to do, and he didn't, but it's important to share. Um, it's an update on the North Santa Am sewer project. So I will provide you, uh, Shelly, this piece of paper after I'm finished, and then you can have it as a communication liaison. We had a really great um, briefing today um, as commissioners from our Marion County team. So the North St. Dam Sewer Authority is continuing its work on the future sewer projects in the cities of Detroit, Gates, Idana, and Mill City. And as of today, April 20th, the North St. Dam Sewer Master Plan is underway and near completion. The detailed engineering, a lengthy permitting process, and the final funding negotiations are still ahead of us and are still very steep. The current information from the Keller Associates, the contracted project engineer, is that sewer construction projects are not likely to be completed in the next two years. This is really important information for residents of those communities to understand. In Detroit and Idana specifically, the process will be significantly longer, three plus years, due to the complexity of the topography in the area. The North San Am Sewer Authority is actively working with Marion County to obtain construction funding through various state and federal entities to get all these projects funded and underway. In short, whatever septic system permits you can get approved now to get your business open or to return to your home, do it. Don't wait. The North San Am Sewer Project will incorporate and engineer the final plans based on what exists on your site once the project is shovel ready. For more updates on this particular project, you can visit www sewer.net or if you have questions or concerns over new or existing septic permits, please contact Marion County Buildings Inspections at 503-588-5147. And the reason we wanted to bring you that report is because we're still getting a lot of confusion amongst the public as to what they should do. We want you to be home. That's the goal. And we as a county are committed to work with the sewer authority and all levels of government to make sure that we can get you home 
and to get you connected to the sewer when it gets here. So if you have any questions, you can contact the inspection department or reach out to any one of the commissioners and we will connect you or answer your questions directly. Thanks for the extra time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Moving along, resolution and orders. Resolution R-22. Actually, Mr. 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 Mayor, uh, we skipped over public hearings. There are none, but- Okay, yeah. That's why I was skipping over because I should have announced that. I'll learn. Um, Resolutions and orders. Resolution R2021-001, authorizing authorization for the city of Detroit to purchase cluster mailboxes. Mr. Mayor, um, with respect to resolutions uh, uh, 001 and 002, I, those have not been yet prepared. Uh, I'll bring those to the council uh, at the next meeting. So we can, we can skip over those and go straight to councilor reports if you like. Council reports, this is a chance for each councilor to kind of give updates on what they're doing, uh, maybe in their commissioner role and, and go from there. Let's start with, uh, uh, I'm just gonna start at that end, Councilor Page. Uh, so, Mark, Mark oh, uh, I'm, oh. <laughs> I'm um, We're continuing to work on the plan for uh, to try and coordinate with uh, the people that are doing the amphitheater for the park. Um, Kelly, I just gave her a, a recent ask. They're looking for some information based on the way the park was put together in the beginning. I suspect it's uh, related to what the soil is, what they're dealing with, drainage type things, so they can make some final plans to submit to us. So, uh, we'll be getting that back to them as soon as we can kind of dig that up. Um, other than that, the bathrooms are open, water's flowing there. We're going to need some repairs in the bathrooms and the concrete in front of the park, uh, but we're, we're going to get that done. That's what I got for the park. Thank you. Councilor Luke. Hello. Well, uh, Still ongoing testing, just got some reports today of more testing from HBH, but no definitive answers on anything, but no news is good news at this point, <laughs> um, to be honest. So uh, where is available, um, contact the city office um, to get your water hooked up. Um, I did want to comment real quick, Eric, that's awesome on the amphitheater, and I actually got to thinking about this yesterday, they didn't worry about it. Wow, the amphitheater there and the community center right beside it. And, you know, what a what a really amazing, you know, picture I've got in my mind of that. So, um, but uh, yeah, everything is uh, is on track, on task. And we're just continuing through with all the testing of the water system. And there's a few more things we'll continue to work on. Thank you. Councilor Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I'd just like to say thanks to the Mary County Commissioners for uh, the funding for keeping the canyon safe with our Marion County uh, officers. That is amazing. Um, I went out on the lake on Sunday. Um, there is a lot of debris out there. So if anybody's thinking that uh, it's going to be, you know, no debris or debris free, there are big logs, stumps and everything else that we've seen when the water is down lower. Um, also, I, I can't believe it, but the water is, well, I can't believe the water is freezing, but I also saw people out there tubing, which I thought was nuts, but then yet kids these days, uh, they're bulletproof. Um, I just like to remind everybody wear their life jackets because if they get dumped in that water, I have a bad feeling. Um, that's all I've got besides I've got, um, Deputy Olson here, if he wants to give an update. He, he's on the agenda later he's on. on. The, we'll, we'll bring him up. Okay, and okay, and then I'm not sure if Damon Faust is, he's on here as well, so I'll yes. wait to then as well. So that's all I've got, Mayor. Thank you. Councilor Engel. Thank you, Mayor Trett. I have signed off on a few more building permits this week. We are going like gangbusters up there. It's very exciting to see what's happening up there. Um, also working with our city planner to 
look at some of our building codes and determine if we can do away with some or if we can relax some of them. Apparently, once upon a time, there was a lot of building code writing happening. So we are working to see if there are ways that we can make uh, building in Detroit a little bit easier and a little bit less cumbersome. Councilor Tesdale. I don't have anything new. Um, just a little bit, few more conversations about um, the interest in bike and trails. Um, and I, I did sit in a seminar or a webinar with um, Oregon State Parks. It was about a two hour seminar and uh, lots of requirements if we ever ask for funding from them to get help. So it'd be about a year of gathering information and definitely need a lot of help. So that's all for me. Thank you. Um, mayor's report, just the usual. What about, what about Councilor Shepard? Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Shepard. I had it on my notes too, Greg. Uh, yeah. Um, I want to thank the county for uh, they're doing some vector riding in downtown Detroit, uh, which is basically blasting out some of the culverts. There's a lot of silt and debris in there. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you're finally doing that because we've had drainage issues for years um, going from downtown down towards uh, Detroit Lake. And uh, also, I'm still concerned about uh, uh, ODOT. Uh, right-of-way cutting on our right-of-ways. Uh, I don't believe it started yet, but I'm concerned that it, uh, it's going to start at such a late date that it's going to conflict with uh, people uh, starting projects on their property and cleaning and building and getting uh, uh, building materials and all that. So, and also being in the way of uh, Zipley and uh, consumer power. So I'm, I'm hoping they start early. I've heard they're focus on the highway first and then Detroit. So um, anyway, I hope they, they speed it up. And I still want to pave um, that those uh, Scott Avenue, that's a $100,000 grant we, we received from ODOT. And I want to uh, pave and start that walkway project on Forest Avenue. I'd like to do it this summer. Uh, so that's still in the works. And then uh, we should get another application for a grant here pretty soon from uh, from ODAT for another uh, another possible uh, grant site. So I'm, I'm going to uh, shake the tree on that and see what we can get. Uh, and then I've been working with uh, uh, ETART, the erosion uh, mitigation uh, folks uh, with uh, FEMA. And I'm going to try to get the Forest Service a little more involved too. Um, like I said before, they're going to plant, uh, Forest Service is going to plant uh, 40,000 acres in three years, which is a monumental task. Um, if they plant uh, 12 by 12 spacing, that's well over a million trees. And a good tree planter can plant a thousand trees a day, but uh, it's going to be uh, quite the project. But I'm hoping we can try to get first priority in the Mackey Creek drainage. They have about 250 acres and it'd be nice to get some trees in there next fall. And also I'm trying to get some aerial seeding uh, east of Detroit and in the Mackey Creek drainage, get some, uh, uh, like to get some grasses growing in there for soil stabilization. Uh, and that probably won't happen until the fall. It's getting late to be putting the seed out now unless we get quite a bit more rain. Um, and that's that's about it. Thank you. Um, for me, the usual meetings, I, I, uh, there was a hearing yesterday on Senate Bill 6, 264, I believe it was. Uh, Commissioner Cameron ca called and asked if uh, I could write a quick letter. Uh, 264, one of the things that would allow counties to do is forget, or give breaks on property taxes for the 10 months following the fire. Up to 10 months following the fire. Um, there are a couple cities in southern Oregon are against it. Uh, so I wrote a quick letter, had a doctor's appointment, couldn't testify, but wrote a quick letter to them saying uh, that we would like to have that option. It is an option. The county does or doesn't have to do it. So hopefully um, we'll get some relief that way. Also, uh, 
just a lot of meetings, uh, beginning to talk to Congressman Schrader about water in the lake again. And uh, so those things that going to have a conversation with him on maybe some future actions there. Uh, with that, I'll just kind of let it go from there. Uh, staff reports. First, I'd like to hear from Matt Del Moro. Matt, water? Yeah. Um, I guess things are moving well. It's Tim gave a pretty good summary where uh, one thing we had actually originally talked about last week of getting on this meeting it was some monitoring equipment for both of the water sources. Um, a couple of, yeah. I got a quote, it came in a little bit higher than I thought it would. So I went ahead and got three quotes. So we do have three quotes uh, for when we make a decision on that. I have sent that over to the insurance company to review. I'm still waiting on authorization for them to basically say that state that they will provide the funding for that. If not, I've also sent a request to FEMA to see if that would be covered by FEMA as well. So um, we're still working on the funding. In the meantime, I've been communicating with Bob Bruce, the operator, and we'll focus on getting grab samples when uh, weather gets bad so we can start to get some background turbidity information uh, but we're still working on that uh, the treatment plant is up and running it's had some kinks but we're getting them all worked out and uh, we're making water so um, yeah it's moving along well I talked to or I heard back from Rob and we are getting samples taken on all the properties now we've kind of moved from the undamaged properties we've gotten all the main lines done and we're just going through service laterals now so we're just uh chugging through those as quickly as we can getting the samples sent off to the lab i think we had lab capacity increased recently so we can move a little bit faster on those samplings um but yeah we're just waiting to get the info back as quickly as we can great thank you and and matt we talked about it yesterday rough timeline for back to permanent and not having to conserve water Nothing. yes um so a little bit of that is going to depend on how much and how how quickly and how much useful data we can get from Mackey Creek and Brighton Bush and turbidity monitoring um right now I'm kind of setting a timeline of two years I'm optimistic that we can do it quicker than that but that's kind of where I'm starting at is two years it, it's really going to depend how quickly we can get meaningful data out of those out of the rivers right and again I think people have to realize that system was destroyed it's not a repair right <clears throat> okay great thank you Mayor Tritt I have a question for Matt Councilor Engel in regards to conserving water I know things like watering your lawn, power washing your house are not gonna be appropriate activities. Um, with all the construction that's gonna be occurring, I realize that concrete trucks come with their concrete made and they don't need to use a hose from your yard. However, I have seen over years that they like to hose off all their equipment before they leave. I'm very concerned with the amount of construction that's gonna be happening up there of the usage of water by the concrete companies. Is that a concern that I should have? It's fair to monitor and we'll continue monitoring it as we move forward. I, I definitely don't want to cause any alarm that we would hold up construction. We're definitely not going to do that. Um, and we're going to try and do whatever we can to mitigate and get that the second reservoir up as quickly as possible so we can increase storage. Um, so, but, but it is something to keep an eye on. Um, and just, you know, we ask that you're going to need water for construction and that's okay. Um, but just, you know, keep in mind that we are on limited capacity. So, you know, just, just keep in mind, don't leave running faucets when you're working on it and, and, and use water wisely. Thank you. I've got a question for Matt. Uh, Officer Greg, Shepherd. Greg Shepard. Uh, yeah. Are, are we still considering maybe some uh, alternate sources also like maybe a, a, a well or uh, possibly hooking up to uh, Idana just to have a backup. Uh, I know we yes. had a well in town before it was uh, decommissioned in 1994 for some reason, but. Uh, yeah, so um, do you have, well, I guess I, I, 
if we have any info on that well, I was looking through drinking water, uh, the services online and the well online well log data, and the ones I was finding owned by the city, there was not a lot of info posted. So there wasn't a lot to go off of. If anybody, I know a lot was lost in the fire, but if we've got old records of any of the well data from any of the wells, that would be extremely valuable for us. Yeah. Um, get that provided to us. I, I do have some information. A friend okay. of mine used to be a, a, a well examiner in Eastern Oregon. He just retired, but he sent me about a 50 page document on some old records that go back to 1908. Uh, there was a well right there um, on the corner of uh, Forest Avenue and Highway 22, I was kind of surprised it was actually inside the ODOT right away, but for some reason it was decommissioned. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, anyway. and so, yeah, that would be if you could get that information sent over to us, that would that would be very very helpful. Um, and then in terms of the inner tie between Detroit and Idana, I'm still working on funding for that. Um, but I, I have reached out to Idana and they are definitely interested in meeting with you guys to, uh, to talk about that. That's something they're definitely interested in, in. So we're trying to wrangle up some funding for that. Um, but that is also an alternative. I That one's going to be a little bit more... I mean, that would be an emergency use, but uh, that would definitely help out if, you know, if we did struggle at certain points with low water, then that, that is a system that could be utilized. So, um, yes, we're, we are looking into, actively looking into the inner tie, and if you can get me some info on the wells, then we'll look at that as well. Okay, yeah, the reason I'm so worried about it is our two watersheds were, uh, severely burned in areas and we're probably going to have erosion problems issues for the next five to ten years and that's why I, I think we had to look at alternative uh, sources. But, yes and, and that's a fear we share as well I mean that's kind of I, I love the treatment equipment you guys have it's just it's not it's very sensitive to fluctuations in turbidity so that that does give us some pause and that's that's why the as much data as we can collect. So um, we're definitely open to looking at those sources as well. Okay, a another point, I don't wanna drag this out, but I remember way back when I was first on the council, we were gonna put a storage tank in the Canyon Ridge Estates subdivision. And for some reason, all my notes got burned up in the fire, but um, for some reason we decided not to put the tank there and it was gonna be about a 100,000 gallon tank, but I think we had to think about an extra storage tank too for reserve and for fire or whatever but yeah and that's I mean that's already in your guys's capital improvements plan for another storage tank I that's going to be a uh, we obviously can't do that with FEMA funds um at least easily uh so but but there there is that is something that the city does already have plans for so if we can find some ways to fund that and get that work done now then that's definitely something we can look at doing as well. Okay, thanks. Yep, thanks, thanks, Craig. Um, staff, we're gonna to go to staff reports. Uh, staff, may, we got a little off guard list, so we're just gonna run down the list. We've, we've got things, I got it. Count, staff, uh, city recorder, anything to for you? Um, Well, first I would like to, sorry about my voice. Um, I'd like to thank Marion County for um, getting the administrative office some um, help when, with the uh, hiring of um, Mr. Chris Appley and we're looking forward to it and I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> so, um, um, as well as I just wanted to um, last week, the last meeting, um, you guys approved a letter for the hazard trees um, to uh, to the residents and um, we've heard from the residents, so we're helping them out. And, um, as long as, you know, people call and let us know, keep us updated on their trees and what they're doing. Um, and, and we had a little bit of, of an issue with the um, hotline, but that has been straightened out now. So, um, they can call the hotline and, um, or go on their website. I don't have their website with me, but um, I can put that on the um, 
uh, social media, media, excuse me. Um, they will they will help you through that. And it's a pretty easy process. It doesn't go through FEMA. Um, it is a state. Uh, the phase two is a state deal. That's what um, ODOT, uh, Anna Hansen had told me. So, so it's easier than I thought it was. And just for people who notice, I got the letter called Friday to register. And there was a lot of confusion. No. Um, I know that that we talked to ODOT today. I contacted um, the state, Stan Thomas, the uh, state coordinator. We're going to talk again tomorrow to make sure it's straightened out. So if you get some confusion from the people taking the call additionally, don't panic and just kind of stay the course. Thank you. City mm -hmm. Clerk, uh, Michelle O'Connor, are you here and do you have anything? I yeah, it. I'm here. I'm Hi. here. Um, yeah, I just wanted to report that in preparation for um, billing for water, um, I met with John Thomas with Ferguson Waterworks at the office last week, and he showed me um, how to upload the, the routes um, for our water technician. And then once he reads the meters, um, he showed me how to download after he reads all the meters. Um, and then I have a call into Lori, who is the trainer who will train me on the UB Max software. Uh, so that once we have the meter readings downloaded, um, she's gonna show me how to do the billing portion of that. And then um, just to add on to what you guys were just talking about, I did um, post today on social media um, about the hazard trees and the website and the phone number and the process um, for uh, signing up for the hazard trees to be taken down. Great. It should be on Nextdoor and Facebook. And could you get it to the website also? Yeah, I can, I can get Lori to upload it to the website too. Thank you. Moving along, City Finance Officer, uh, Christine is not with us this evening. Marion County Sheriff, Deputy Olson. This is your, this is your talking part of it right there. All right, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yep. So, not really too much to report. I know we just that last. Um, oh, it's on mute. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. So not too much. Uh, obviously, we just met last week, so uh, nothing's really changed. Uh, I am going to steal something positive from Commissioner or Councillor Engel. Uh, starting Saturday, we're going to have our first recreational event in Detroit since the fires. So the fishing derby is all go. And there's, from what I hear, there's a lot of boats signed up. So it's going to be a big step for us. And I'm looking forward to being out there. I'm looking forward to seeing people. So other than that, keep reporting stuff if you see it. And let me know if you see something, please, in a timely manner, if you can. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, identity. Identity Detroit Fire. Damon, did you get... I got a, a text from him. He was traveling and didn't, wasn't sure he could be with us tonight. And I don't see him. So moving along. City Attorney. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of the council. Um, so I appreciate, first of all, everyone's patience. Uh, as you see, I've reformatted uh, the agenda. Uh, we'll, we'll, if the it's a work in progress. We'll keep working on it. If there's any suggestions, let me know. Um, I'm working on um, rules of procedure for the city council. Uh, I emailed those out to everybody. I think it was Saturday, if I remember right. Um, and uh, if you could take a look at those um, and get back to me on your thoughts, concerns, additions, subtractions, that would be great. Um, I'd like to, uh, it, it's helpful to get rules of procedure in place 
because it helps everybody know ahead of time kind of what to expect, how it's going to work, um, and it, it ensures fairness for everybody. And I think it's, you know, um, I, I think it's, it's, it'll be a good thing for us to have, for the city to have moving forward uh, those rules of procedure. Um, I'll also be working um, with uh, Councillor Smith and Councillor Engel on the TOT ordinance, as well as an enforcement ordinance that we had discussed uh, before. And I'll probably be bringing those to the council um, either sometime in May, I would expect probably by the middle of May. Um, in light of the passage of, or the failure of resolution 618, there, the upcoming city council meetings uh, is now scheduled for May 4th. Uh, and then May 18th, but the uh, locations are to be determined. As soon as we find a place, um, I will, uh, I will, we will make sure that we get that, uh, the location out of, of course, everyone. We're not able to use the city of Kaiser's um, uh, meeting space on the 4th because we have a budget meeting that night. So, um, so it won't be available. Uh, other than that, um, I've had a chance to speak with just about all the uh, counselors and the staff, and I appreciate your patience with me. I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you a lot better and uh, working with you uh, as we uh, as we move forward. Hopefully, the, our first city council meeting in Detroit on Labor Day in the gym that would be fantastic. Um, so. Uh, oh, I, one other thing I almost forgot. So uh, I've been in contact with uh, Mr. Epley and folks from the League of Oregon Cities, and we're putting together a training uh, session for all of you all. Um, we're still working on dates and availabilities, so we can go over just council rules of procedure, best practices, public records, and those kinds of things. Um, and so just keep an eye out on your email. That, that'll be coming across your way pretty soon. Nothing else. Councilor Smith. Um, just to let you know the TOT ordinance, um, I have looped uh, Councilor Tisdall in there uh, to get her input as far as be, with the tourism and the connection she's got. So she's going to be working with that as well. Excellent. Thank you. Any other business? Next meeting, May 4th at 6.30 p.m. Mr. Mayor. No, oh, I'm sorry. Councilor Page. Councilor Page, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, uh, I just, I, I, I miss thanking uh, all, the, all the people that have supported us. City of Kaiser, thank you. Kathy Clark, Mayor Clark, Marion County. Uh, City of Detroit has purely, without question, struggled with this tragedy and without the support we receive, I don't know where we can be at. I, I see us heading in a good direction. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Any other business? If not, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion Councilor Luke to adjourn. Second? Second. Second Councilor Page. <clears throat> all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions. Motion passes. We are adjourned at 7:47 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.